we know when the signing of the memorandum was, though. Jim, uh, Lieutenant Kasaska being the first military member of the coalition to be caught and executed like this, would that give it a different dimension or its uh, military engagement? Well, let me first say, obviously, we're going to see this process as we always do uh, through. And as I mentioned, our intelligence community is working to authenticate the video. And obviously, we would defer to the government of Jordan and any public comments that they would make. I don't think there's any question. Uh, we have not been holding back on our efforts to degrade and defeat ISIL, and I suspect that will continue. But I'm not going to do analysis from here today when this, these reports just came out uh, in the last two hours. Now, on the, on the, uh, the fact that the to speak to that now. Is there any concern that the death of a member of the military from the region could perhaps cause other countries that have joined the We haven't seen indication of that at this point, Raz, but I'm not going to analyze that. It just wouldn't be appropriate, given uh, what we're looking at at this point in these recent reports. Do we have more on Jordan before we continue? Go ahead. Continuing with the, uh, the visit and the, you know, the partnership mm -hmm. agreement that you've signed with yes. the Jordanian. Uh, Jordan has long been an important com member of the coalition. As you noted, uh, the secretary and uh, signed uh, with the Jordanian uh, officials today, an MOU that reflects the intention to increase U.S. assistance to the government of Jordan from $660 million to $1 billion per year for the years 2015 through 2017. But I would remind you, we've long been um, a significant provider of assistance to the government of Jordan. They're an important partner. We work with them on a range of vital, uh, you know, national and international issues. Now, this one... Put out a fact sheet, Saeed, so I would uh, uh, encourage you to take a look at that. Go ahead. Sure. The secretary, in his remarks, said 600 million, but the correct number is 660. Good question. That would be my understanding of the reading as well, but why don't I just double check that for you to make sure in, in terms of the way it's written? And, and on, on and the corollary to that last question, I mean, is it. Be I believe we often do, uh, you know, yearly well, or twice it? yearly. More is this with the under? We uh, have made a. I wouldn't read into it in that regard. We, I expect, will let me explain. I ex <laughs> let me finish then. I expect we'll continue to provide assistance. This was the recent announcement. I'm sure there will be additional in the coming years. The secretary addressed the meeting this morning of ISIL of ambassadors from the sorry of ambassadors from the coalition who joined the fight against ISIL. Um, he spoke to the purpose of the meeting a bit this morning, and as you know, uh, we see uh, a great benefit in bringing together uh, the more than 35 Washington-based ambassadors from partner countries in the global coalition. We've had ongoing meetings. It was an opportunity for coalition partners to reaffirm our shared resolve to address uh, this common threat and discuss how to strengthen, accelerate, and integrate our contributions to coalition efforts. Uh, this is the second time, uh, Washington, second Washington plenary session of coalition ambassadors. Uh, there was one uh, that we held uh, last November as well. Can I just ask something logistically on that? Mm -hmm. Was it just ambassadors? There's been some stuff in the ether. I think that's my understanding, but I, obviously there were a lot of individuals, as you well, mentioned, in town today. So. Right, and yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. there, so I'm just wondering. To give clarification on that. Go ahead, Samir. Can you give us a readout about the secretary's meeting with the king? Uh, I, we put out um, a media note that I would point you to. Uh, he also spoke to it this morning. I don't expect we'll have more of a readout beyond that. Yeah, the, the issue is the of, we had the Qatari foreign minister in town yesterday, mm -hmm. obviously a member of the coalition as well, the Jordanians. ...to to the fact that those foreign ministers often visit the United States. We often visit their countries. We work closely with them on a range of issues. And obviously, uh, we're continuing to work to con continue to uh, step up our efforts with the coalition. We didn't bring them together for... Specific we had a plenary session with these ambassadors last November. That was a couple of months ago. This was a natural time to do it again. Mm -hmm. Can you describe how the secretary found out about uh, the pilot's murder and what his initial reaction tells on that to read out for you. Right? Staying in the region and the mm -hmm. fight against ISIL. Sure. Uh, and now, I know this is probably a question better addressed to the Pentagon. But there's, Rack? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, in the fight against ISIL, you know, in the fight or in the effort to reclaim or retake, to liberate Mosul, uh, so there seems to be a lot of uh, 
bickering and Let me first say on the first part I have no confirmation of that or validation of that and my yeah. suspicion is your information is inaccurate on the second piece um, there are a range of steps that we're taking obviously we work closely with the government of Iraq as you know one of the efforts that the anti-ISIL coalition is very focused on is not only boosting their capacity but taking steps to go after ISIL in Iraq um, we have, and, and you are right, most of this in terms of technicalities is best posed to the Pentagon and they can get into specifics, let me finish, as they often do. And so I would certainly encourage you to pose this question to them. But I would also add that in addition to the efforts of the coalition countries, that um, Prime Minister Abadi has been taking uh, steps to uh, you know, greater, uh, create greater unity, to uh, better incorporate um, Different forces uh, underneath the Iraqi security forces. That something has been on. That is something that has been ongoing. It's not new now, but they're continuing to take steps on. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my well, Saeed, I have nothing to validate your view or your opinion. Seeing opinion, those I'm reports exactly. that you've mentioned, so mm -hmm. I don't think anyone should take that as fact. Uh, mm -hmm. The National Guard is part of the Iraqi government's long-term restructuring plan of the Iraqi security forces into a federalized security force. Uh, this is something that. Um, they've asked for United States uh, for the United States for assistance to help further define and develop the program. We're working with the government and providing advice based on our previous experiences. The National Guard will not replace, but rather augment a restructured, multi-sect and multi-ethnic uh, federal security force, as well as address a key demand that many leaders from across Iraq have called for over the last 10 years. It's been in the process of being implemented for a couple of months now, but obviously it's not at at full uh, completion. Um, go ahead. Go back to Jordan for a moment. Sure. Um, many in Jordan, um, including the political political opposition, was already opposed to Jordan's role in the anti ISIL court. Exact question. Do we have any more on this particular issue, or ISIL, or um, Iraq, before we continue? One second. Go ahead. Um, I think recently there were many calls in this town for increasing the size and the role of American. Call specifically. Uh, Can you be a little more specific? McCain, a former to the anti-ISIL coalition or specific kinds of the coalition, of assistance? the role and the size of American forces. And our policy in that regard. No change. Nope. Uh, new topic? Yes. Go ahead. Um, uh, let's do something that's not having to do with people dying. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Department of State notified um, just a couple of weeks ago, January 16th, that the eight agencies would have until February 2nd to provide their views with regard to the Keystone Pipeline permit application. That, of course, was yesterday. Um, we will treat the agency's replies as part of an inter internal interagency process. Uh, they're not mandated by the executive order to provide their views on the national interest regarding the proposed project, uh, but we were required to request their views. Uh, there's not a deadline or a timeline. Of course, their views will be factored into the consideration process. Did all eight actually submit? Or we treat them as internal recommendations. Well, I'm not asking what they say. However, the EPA has already put theirs out. I so. understand that. <laughs> well, then it's pointless for you guys to keep them secret, right? Well, we treat I'm them just as wondering. internal recommendations. Well, that's fair enough, but I just want I to know if all – well, it's – I don't understand why you can't say if all recommendations, and I'm not going to confirm uh, whether or not we've received them. They're not mandated. The ones we receive will be uh, will be factored into the consideration process. Can you feel that you have a balanced representation? As I mentioned, I'm, we treat them as internal. I'm what not going to What happened to this transparency I idea? I don't get it. I'm not asking what's in the report. If it recommendations out publicly, they put out their views on the final SEIS. It's something different, but that's an important distinction. Go ahead, Raj. Even though these uh, reports weren't mailed, well, I'm not going to provide analysis on internal reports and internal uh, uh, inputs that we requested. Uh, as you asked, this is an internal process. Uh, we'll proceed through as the executive order mandates. There isn't a deadline or a timeline. Obviously, we'll factor in all of the input from agencies from these reports and other agent other input they offer in other ways. How do you just? How do you? How do you confirm to people? Sorry, Ros. Yeah. Is, 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 does the administration intend to make a determination one way or the other before? I don't think we've said anything otherwise. So uh, there will be so a determination before January. But we, det we are going to make a determination. When you say internal process, mm -hmm. okay, that really means secret and non-transparent. I agree with that. A great deal of information oh. here is public, Matt. 
just because we're not making public internal input that we receive. I'm not asking for, but see, that's not the question. I'm just asking if all. To confirm. Okay, well, I just think because the, because the whole question of this administration is transparency. I don't see how that compromises I've anything. registered your question. Thank I'll you. let you know if we're going to confirm it. Any more on Keystone before we move on? Go ahead. A new topic. Sure. Ukraine. Okay. Uh, speaking about uh, internal deliberation, do you have uh, something more to say about the possible? He process? hasn't asked his question. How do you know what he was going to ask? He it, did actually he ask the full question. He just asked if I have anything new to add to the internal deliberations of which I addressed the, yesterday. Can I ask? Yeah. I said no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was because the apparently, question. apparently the Ukrainian. A prediction of that. What I will convey is we've said as we've talked a little bit about the trip is that the secretary was there about a year ago. Uh, he's going because it's important in his view to have face-to-face -face meetings and discuss progress that's been made, progress they can still continue to make on everything from economic reforms to uh, the effort to de-escalate the situation on the ground. But I have nothing to preview for you beyond that. But not nothing on weapons deliveries? Nope. This is an ongoing uh, process, and we've not taken things on or off the table, as I mentioned yesterday. But. I'm not making a prediction of anything else. Do you have any response to sorry, Mark? Do you have any response to the report that came out yesterday from eight former officials? I've seen the report, and as you mentioned, there are a number of former officials, m many of whom worked in the State Department and are well respected. We certainly talk to a range of individuals and take their input. And as I mentioned, we have an ongoing process where we haven't taken options on or off the table, but we weigh a number of factors. Jen, earlier today, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights mm -hmm. came out uh, and to it was. I still continue to believe, and I think. Uh, many, I haven't taken a close look at those comments, but I would say the vast majority of the international community believe the preponderance of uh, aggressive actions are coming <laughs> from the Russian side and the side of the Russian-backed separatists. We certainly continue to encourage both sides to take steps to prevent civilian casualties and uh, to uh, keep take that in as a as an important factor as this conflict is ongoing. Okay. Well, when you say that you continue, well, we continue to encourage it. I'm not going to give a day by day evaluation of that. Well, you know, back during the Gaza Gaza conflict, and I realize they're separate situations, but you were highly critical of Israel for um, not doing enough to limit civilian casualties. Or we were particularly exactly. So I'm not sure why exactly it is that you can't say if. Either side. In Gaza I'm not trying to equate the situations. Ukraine. I'm trying to equate the U.S. Um, response and what the U.S. thinks about what's going on in Ukraine. Considering you have, in fact, given what you would call or a number of times, but I'm happy to repeat, uh, we remain concerned about the aggressive actions of Russia and Russian-backed separatists and the steps they're taking illegally in the country of Ukraine. Uh, we, of course, also encourage the Ukrainians when they're fighting back and defending their own country to take into account civilian casualties. I have not, okay. I'm not at the point, and it does not warrant making the type of condemnation that we did or making the statements we did related to Gaza. I had a All question right. last week, actually, which goes <coughs> a little bit to this, about mm -hmm. the reports coming out of eastern Ukraine about the travel. Any of what you just said, I think I tried to explain to Joe that there are a couple of factors <coughs> here at play. One is that you have an issue where Russian-backed separatists are bringing in or there's a concern about what they're bringing in and bringing out and who's crossing over into uh, areas of Ukraine that are not controlled by the separatists. That's a valid concern. Uh, there is also a concern we have about making sure humanitarian assistance gets in. The government of Ukraine is trying to weigh how to get assistance in, but also how to prevent putting areas that are not controlled by the separatists at greater risk. That's a valid concern in our view. We, of course, want humanitarian assistance to get in, as does the international community. But the problem is, in some of these separatist-controlled areas, there's no one to kind of run these government services that they could give money and payments to. So it's a difficult situation. That's why we're working with the international humanitarian community to see what more we can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ahead. on Ukraine. Uh, so yesterday, at the beginning of the day, uh, the talk about sending weapons and so on to... Well, I, I'm not going to make a prediction of that, Said. I think... Mm -hmm. As I mentioned yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we provide a range of assistance. Uh, we haven't taken options off the table. Um, you know, clearly there are ongoing internal uh, deliberations about what should be done and what the appropriate uh, kind of assistance is. We're eval always evaluating those options. It doesn't change the fact that we believe a negotiated 
uh, solution to the crisis is the right approach, and no decision has been made to provide lethal assistance. Let me ask you, as we come close to the... I think um, early, I went through this yesterday, and I'm, I'm happy sorry, to do I, it quickly you know, again, sorry, but just, former yeah. President Yanukovych uh, abdicated his responsibilities by yeah. fleeing uh, Kiev during a political crisis. Mm -hmm. He was voted out of power by a near-unanimous vote of the Rada, including virtually all members of his own party. He lost legitimacy, and Ukraine's lawmakers in the Rada fulfilled their obligation to the people by uh, preserving a democratic government <coughs> until President Poroshenko was elected. Uh, clearly, then, you have Russian-backed separatists and Russia supporting these efforts coming into Ukraine. The United States is committed to uh, helping support a sovereign country, helping them uh, pursue economic reforms, helping them with the security assistance they need. Um, we clearly want to see a de-escalation of the crisis, and we've been consistent with that. Let's go on to a new topic. Uh, go ahead. Another new topic, Turkey. Okay. Can you update us information about Fethullah Gülen? As we know that his passport has been cancelled by Turkey. Uh, well, as we've talked about a little bit in uh, here before, um, we would refer you to the Turkish government on those specific reports that I know are new today. I don't have anything new to add to them. Uh, let's any more on Turkey before we continue? North Korea. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, North Korean leader Kim Jong Un uh, announced yesterday uh, his. Well, I think one we've addressed this during testimony, and a range of uh, senior officials have uh, have talked about um, our North Korea and, and how we view that relationship or lack thereof. Um, we have offered and continue to offer, uh, and I would I'm quoting here actually from. Special Representative Sung Kim's testimony from January 13th. Nothing has changed in the last couple of weeks. He said, the United States has offered and continues to offer Pyongyang an improved bilateral relationship, provided it takes an action to demonstrate a willingness to fulfill its denuclearization commitments and address our important concerns, which are also shared by the international community. Uh, we've made clear to, the Nor to North Korea that the door is open to meaningful engagement while applying unilateral and multilateral pressure to steer it toward the door. Unfortunately, while North Korea claims to seek talk without preconditions, it has consistently rebuffed or ignored uh, our offers for dialogue and instead responded with a series of provocations. That hasn't changed. That remains our position and our view. Can I ask about for a second? Sure. I wonder if you saw the uh, op-ed piece that Gulen wrote in the... I don't have any uh, comments on his opinion piece, okay. no. Can I go to Iran, please? Yeah. Turkey, North Korea, sure. Uh, just when you say address your concerns about denuclearization. What, what do you mean by address? Well, I, I mean, I don't think I'm, you are familiar with what our terms are as it relates to six-party talks. Uh, we've long had a means of uh, talking to North Korea. We typically don't outline that. I'm not going to outline that further. Um, but clearly, um, they haven't addressed. I'm not going to discuss, I'm not going to outline what we mean by that further. We you know can't, what we You mean. can't say what you would. And one last thing, mm -hmm. does address posture To bodies. having dialogue, right? That's all we're referring to here. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not going to spell it out more specifically than that <coughs> at this point in time. So, um, Jen, we have a report out of Vienna this, uh, mm -hmm. this morning talking about um, discussion. I would just say the technical aspects mm -hmm. of such a, a deal um, have not yet been agreed upon. And obviously, there are discussion about a range of issues. Uh, we're squarely focused on cutting off Iran's four pathways to material for a nuclear weapon. Uh, as uh, many officials have said, there are many pieces of the puzzle that need to fit together. So speculation before that is not a, a depiction of the but actual picture. Is, is this one of I think there are a host of factors, including how many centrifuges are operating, how advanced those centrifuges are. Of course, we all know that those are factors, but beyond that, I'm not going to speculate on those. Okay. Well, so it, well, it sounds as though you're saying yeah. Yeah, how they will operate. Obviously, those are factors in cutting off the four pathways. Right, but you can't. Uh, but you're not willing to say whether or not the, uh, the discussion has been had about uh, about allowing Iran to keep a higher number of centrifuges if those centrifuges have left. No, I'm right. not going to confirm any reports out there about what's tied to what. Can I just ask if mm -hmm. there's been any determination on the substance of schedule yet, whether he'll meet Prime Minister Zari? I'm happy to check. I know it's uh, we're finalizing the schedule, so hopefully we'll know more on that in the next 24 hours or so. Yemen? Um, do you have more on Iran before no, we continue? To change oh. topic. Uh, on Yemen. Okay. Uh, three days ago, the Houthis uh, said that they gave a three-day uh, deadline. Uh, otherwise, they will take over the... 
Well, we, we're certainly aware of the situation. We are right. following closely. Um, yeah. Our belief continues to be that any political solution to the current crisis should be consistent with the uh, GCC initiative, the outcomes of a national dialogue, conference, UN Security Council resolutions, and Yemeni law. Uh, we're certainly not putting deadlines or timelines. We're encouraging dialogue between all of the parties. Mm -hmm. But you still recognize Hadi as the uh, as the legit technically speaking, President it's Hadi remains president until his resignation is accept accepted. Excuse me by the parliament. So what happens? I'm then? sure we'll have a discussion about it, and our policy team will discuss it, and then we'll have a discussion in here about it. And, and finally, on this one, are you in any anything new to read out for you? Did you? Oh, go ahead. No, just on this issue. What did the secretary mean yesterday? when he was meeting with Qatari foreign minister and he... CT uh, efforts as yeah, well, And course. that they're part of the political process, mm -hmm. you know, that they have a, a role there. I wondered if um, maybe Qatar... If any more I can read out about what he meant, I certainly understand okay. the question. Go ahead. Um, we have reports that uh, Chadian troops have entered uh, northern Nigeria. Just a moment, but um, I'm happy to talk to our Africa team and, and get you something, Arshad or Neil, if you're interested. Uh, do we have any more new topics? Yeah. Okay. Palestinian occupied sure. territory. Uh, the Israelis withheld again. Uh, discussion with both the Israelis and the Palestinians. I don't have any confirmation of what you just stated, mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy to talk to our team about a it. A quick follow up on the UNRWA. Uh, States have certainly delivered right. on our commitments, right. you, you and we did. encourage every country to deliver on their commitments as well. well last night, the uh, head of the U UN committee mm -hmm. investigating the Gaza uh, close. Well, we opposed the creation of the close commission of inquiry in the first place. So we remain concerned, given the one-sided nature of the resolution that created the commission of inquiry and the history of um, the HRC stance on Israel. Um, we still don't believe that such a mechanism as the commission of inquiry contributes to the shared goal and priority of reaching a sustainable and durable agreement. <coughs> um, that has long been, has been consistently our view. Okay, but I mean, he says that it should be just, that it's not, not worthwhile pursuing. We, we don't think it's uh, the appropriate mechanism. I haven't talked to our team about dis dismantlement, <coughs> so we didn't support its creation anyway. So I think it tells you what. But on, on, on that point, there is a pattern that the Israelis dismiss whatever investigatory uh, efforts on their you know, uh, but the position of the no, United States is, so that no, was the question, I understand, and that's but what why I Why would you oppose, why would the United States oppose a, U, a UN commission that is going impartially to investigate crimes that are allegedly <coughs> to have been committed? Because we have concerns about the anti-Israel bias, which we've spoken about in the past. We think there's a range of mechanisms, and mm -hmm. this is not the appropriate one. Yeah, but when the Israeli Prime Minister... I know, think I've addressed the question. Can I move to question. Venezuela, please? Sure. Uh, can, can yesterday, you had, some, you had some rather harsh comments. I don't at this point, but I'm happy to follow up on that as well, Matt. I'll have to right. Sure. I'm going to ask you about um, Ben Rhodes' comments on TV last okay. night. Okay. Um, quote, we still think... Our view. So... Um, should one interpret those comments as a suggestion that you are not going to, that the administration is not planning on changing that I think it policy? should interpret those comments as a statement of where we stand. He also noted in there, as you've read, that uh, we continue to de discuss and consider a range of options. And as we discussed a little bit yesterday, there are, of course, a range of factors that you weigh, including the fact that uh, we don't believe that uh, military escalation is the appropriate or most effective means of proceeding, uh, but we continue to consider a range of requests, what's most appropriate. Nothing has changed about our policy at this point in time. Can you also change the calculus then? I don't know if you've seen it, but um, I, I raised last week the issue of this young mother in mm -hmm. Russia who'd been kind of thing, perhaps, that you were, that uh, Assistant Secretary Newland was talking about in her speech last week at the uh, Brookings Institute where she talked about popular view is. This is in that category. Um, we do expect that, of course, uh, Ms. Dav that Davidova will be treated in keeping with international legal norms. We're troubled by uh, the reports of uh, the arrest of a Russian mother of seven on charges of treason. They are, these are serious charges, uh, and we certainly would call for um, respect, as I mentioned, for uh, international legal norms. Uh, are you surprised that this petition seems like anything surprises uh, any me in social media nowadays? Of course, she has a compelling personal story. We don't have anything more about these specific charges, and we, of course, uh, encourage uh, you know an investigation that respects the process. Uh, go ahead in the back. Okay.
the office of the director of national intelligence has said that intelligence agencies are going to limit the use of information they collect on foreign clear you're referring to a report about the p b b twenty eight report which is largely focused on domestic issues that was released or was reported out today i guess i should say there wasn't this wasn't an internet an announcement about international policy there are certain pieces of course that have been the case we don't collect intelligence to suppress criticism or dissent we don't collect intelligence to disadvantage people based on their ethnicity race gender sexual orientation or religion in terms of bulk collection we will only use data to meet specific security requirements cyber intelligence counterterrorism counterproliferation cyber security there's a great a lot of detail of course in these sort of reviews and reports focused on the domestic piece the president also decided not today but as but some time ago that we will take the unprecedented step of extending certain protections that we have for the american people to people overseas i think that might be what you're referring to no that's not a new announcement but i'm there's not new announce information in this report about our international approach it was my understanding that the report conveying to you and i'm happy to go back to the intelligence community that there isn't components that are new information on the international piece today Piece. Uh, no, there's not. So, uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.